Friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start by thanking the WMO for inviting me to be part of the third conference on the gender dimensions of weather and climate services. I would also like to thank the WMO for their video series showing possible weather presentations from the year 2050. Not only do these videos feature many women presenting the weather, they show how important information services related to weather and climate are to the lives of men, women, and children. Even without seeing those videos, I'm sure you're all aware that climate change impacts are here and set to worsen without urgent action. Every country will be affected. No one is immune. And women and children will bear the brunt of impacts, in particular, impoverished women or women in developing countries. Fortunately, there are encouraging signs that the world is ready to take the urgent action needed to avoid the worst impacts of climate change and adapt to the impacts we know will come. In September, several notable events in New York signaled a shift in what is possible on climate change. The People's Climate March brought hundreds of thousands of people to the streets of New York in support of action, with many more worldwide and online. This shows that we must act on climate change. Climate Week events showcased industry and investor action to reduce climate risk and reap the rewards of lower emissions and heightened resilience. This shows that we can act on climate change. And at the UN Secretary General's Climate Summit, more than 100 heads of state and government gathered to reaffirm the commitment to limit warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius and announce bold action that helps meet that limit. This shows we will act on climate change. We have the opportunity and the responsibility to bring women's voices to the fore of climate change solutions in international delegations, in national decision making, and in community level mitigation and adaptation strategies. Women, with the knowledge we hold, and the ability to get things done are a valuable resource, but traditionally underutilized. International response to climate change can change that and usher in a new era of equality. Each of you can contribute, and each contribution will look different. For the UNFCCC, the Doha gender decision ensures gender issues are considered in the negotiation towards a new universal climate change agreement in 2015. For the WMO, the video series of 2050 weather presentation uses trusted sources to show people how climate change will affect them. And this conference advances the dialogue on how women's knowledge and experience improves crucial weather and climate services. For every agency and institution, and every country and community, Women's knowledge is important in developing effective and practical information services that meet women's needs. And women need these services now more than ever. They are on the front lines of climate impacts, caring for house and home when communities are hit by climate-related disasters such as extreme weather, drought, or floods. Dear friends, this moment in history is defined by two things. First, it is defined by unprecedented clarity on climate change. The science, the business case, the popular support are all clear. The path forward is clear, and we clearly need to ensure women are involved in meeting the challenge. And second, this moment is defined by unprecedented opportunity. Opportunity to put in place a new low carbon growth model that is environmentally and economically sound and at its core, equitable for all. I ask you today to redouble your effort, to seize this opportunity in this moment of unprecedented clarity. I ask you to look closely at how climate and weather services that empower women fit into the broader response to climate change and make those services as effective as possible. I ask you to do your part, to create a raft of resources that resound across 
national climate response, and the international negotiations. By putting these resources in place and becoming vocal advocates for a strong new universal climate change agreement that benefits public health, security, energy, economic growth for men, women, and children worldwide, we can make the most of this great opportunity. With cooperative and concentrated effort today, we create a tomorrow that truly serves everyone equally, man and woman, rich and poor, old and young. Together, united in action, we leave a legacy of equitable social and economic growth for generations to come. I thank you and I wish you a productive conference.